It is unequivocal that human activities are responsible for climate change. That's the finding of a new study by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's the most up-to-date assessment of how global warming will change the world in the coming decades. Environmental experts have called it a massive wake-up call to governments to cut emissions. 234 authors from 66 countries have worked on the landmark assessment. The report says global Wi-Fi. average temperature rise could reach or exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius in the next 20 years. Now that is 10 years sooner than expected. That temperature rise will breach the ambition of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement and bring widespread devastation and unprecedented extreme weather. This all comes less than three months before the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow in Scotland. Vital UN talks that will determine the future course of efforts to tackle climate change. And the UK minister responsible for delivering COP26 has released this statement following the publication of today's report. He says, our message to every country, government, business and part of society is simple. The next decade is decisive. Follow the science and embrace your responsibility to keep the goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius alive. Our environment and energy analyst Roger Harabin has more. Wildfires blazing through Greece and Turkey have horrified people in the region. The panel concludes we'll see a lot more fires as temperatures continue to rise. And rise they will as greenhouse gas emissions keep growing and growing. The increased heat will change weather patterns, bringing more droughts and more rainfall, researchers say. London was shocked to find areas underwater a few weeks ago. Rainfall patterns are hard to predict, but experts say northern Europe will be wetter overall. At London's Hampstead Ponds, they've already had to raise and reinforce the dams to protect hundreds of homes downstream from the sort of floods expected in extreme rains that are forecast to come. The cost has been huge. We're already paying the price of ignoring scientists' warnings on climate change. So this report states as an absolute fact that human influence is warming the climate. Um, And that's a very stark reminder um, that it is our activities which are changing the climate and affecting these extreme weather events. Um, And as the planet continues to warm, these consequences just get worse. Ice in the Arctic is melting faster than many scientists predicted. That leads to sea level rise, which in turn increases coastal flooding. The seas will keep rising for maybe thousands of years because the ocean deep has absorbed so much heat already. Political attitudes are changing. The UK is getting electric cars. We need clean technology for home heating too. In the words of one leading scientist, we're not doomed, but if we want to avoid catastrophe, we have to drastically cut emissions. Now, Roger Harabin, BBC News. Valerie Masson-Delmotte is a climate scientist and co-chair of one of the IPCC working groups which produced the climate change report. She said the threshold of keeping the global temperature at 1.5 degrees Celsius limit will be breached around 2050. The report shows that in the next 20 years, global warming, the average temperature at the Earth's surface over a period of 20 years, is expected to reach or exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above the late 1800s. However, if we rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, if we can reach global net zero CO2 emissions around 2050, it is extremely likely that we can keep global warming well below two degrees. If we do this, it is more likely than not that temperature would gradually decline to below or around 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century with a temporary overshoot of no more than 0.1 degrees Celsius. But if global greenhouse gas emissions remain around today's levels in the coming decades, we would reach two degrees of global warming by the middle of this century.
We're joined now by Tamsin Edwards, a climate scientist and one of the authors of this report. Welcome to BBC News. I know your area of expertise is the oceans and sea level change. And in fact, you spent three years uh, investigating this, haven't, haven't you? So uh, it would be remiss of me not to um, find out um, more about that. Uh, what did you find exactly? Well, that's right. We have over 200 authors um, in the whole report. We have uh, looked at 14,000 scientific studies over three years. Um, and I work on ice sheets and sea level rise. As you say, we don't do new research. We assess the robustness of the evidence. So, for example, for the Antarctic ice sheet, we looked at the range of possibilities of the future of the ice sheet and therefore its contribution to sea level rise. And one of your findings is that the melting of Greenland glaciers is irreversible, am I right? Well, that's right. So there are different parts of, um, there are different uh, ice uh, regions around the world. We have the glaciers of the mountains and the polar regions, and we have the great ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. The mountain and polar glaciers are particularly sensitive, and we have already committed to further melting over the next decades to hundreds of years. Um, we're also going to see um, more ice loss from the Greenland ice sheet um, over the next century, over this century. And for the Antarctic ice sheet, uh, there's a really wide range of possibilities. If we limit greenhouse gas emissions, uh, we may be fortunate and have a relatively low contribution to sea level rise. But if we have very high greenhouse gas emissions and we're unlucky with how sensitive that ice sheet is, we could see very high sea level rise indeed. So am I right that the message is there's no going back from some change? Once they've melted, they can't be refrozen, I assume. But there is a cautious optimism that this could be slowed or indeed even halted, or is that putting it too optimistically? We think that the the mountain and polar the mountain and polar glaciers, sorry, the smaller glaciers and also Arctic sea ice um, could have some reversible changes. So if we limit warming and eventually reduce uh, temperatures further, that those could regrow and and restore to some degree. The ice sheets are much slower to respond. So Greenland and Antarctica um, will keep responding for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. And combined with the warming of the ocean, which makes it expand and contribute to sea level rise, that means sea levels are going to remain elevated for thousands of years. I was very uh, struck by what Inga Anderson said, the executive director of the UN Environment Programme. Uh, she said, scientists have been telling us for over three decades of the dangers of allowing the planet to warm. The world listened but did not hear. And I wondered, do you think government and people will it's a, it's a difference, isn't it, between taking any notice of this and doing something about it? Of course. I mean, speaking personally, you know, I, I do sense a, a real shift in the in the conversation over the last few years. But I think what this um, IPCC assessment report shows, it's much more comprehensive than ever before, assessed more of the scientific evidence than ever before. Obviously, the timing with respect to the COP26 meeting later this year, it really shows that if we do have immediate rapid and large scale reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, we can still limit warming to one and a half degrees uh, above the sort of late 1800s, as we've heard, without much overshoot and eventually go to lower warming again. But if we don't um, enact the policies and pledges that we already have in place, um, and in fact, if we don't make those stronger, um, then we won't uh, meet that target. But what are your conclusions about reducing those greenhouse gas emissions and keeping temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels? Can it can it be done? Well, this particular part of the IPCC report is called the Working Group One report, which is around the science of climate change. And so we looked at different scenarios of emissions and what that would mean for climate change. What we need to look out for next year is the third working group, which looks at mitigation. In other words, where are those emissions coming from? What are the different pathways to cutting those emissions? So that will give much more of that detail about exactly the how of cutting emissions. Whereas what this report is doing is showing the implications of very low emissions or medium intermediate emissions or very high, what that actually implies for the extreme weather, for the sea level rise and other changes in climate.
No, I understand that's really useful. Tamsin Edwards, climate scientist at King's College London and one of the authors of the report. Thanks so much for your time.